All right, we're coming back with a quick video on beam filtration. So when we add a filter into our beam, the primary reason that we're doing it is to reduce the patient's skin dose. It does this by filtering out the low energy or harmful rays. So those slower moving ones, the low energy ones, um, they're absorbed by the, um, it removes them using this filter and the high energy will still pass through. Okay, so they, the low energy x-rays, they contribute nothing to the image. They simply increase patient dose because they're more easily absorbed. When this filtration happens and we remove those low energy photons, the average energy of the beam increases. So it's a similar concept to increasing your KBP. Increase KBP, increase energy, increase filtration, you increase the average energy of the beam. So this allows us to lower the patient's skin dose. Technologists do not adjust the filtration. So if you get a question about adding filtration, technologists are not going to do that. Um, this will make the beam uh, more homogeneous and produce a beam of mainly high energy. So this was just an example of how it increases the average energy. So if we have sort of a collection of these 10 KBP options, the average energy of these 10 are 55. If I remove four of those by adding in a filter, if we average the remaining ones, um, the average energy is higher. And I realized you're not gonna have <laughs> these specific KVPs from for every exposure, um, cause that's just not how it works, but that was just an easier visual um, for you to help you understand that these lower ones, these little stragglers, they get kicked out and then the remaining energies of the beam are collected and the new average will have a higher energy. Um, so there are two types of filtration. There is inherent filtration, which is in your tube. This involves the glass envelope, the insulating oil, and there's a diagonal mirror used for positioning. Added filtration is filtration that is added to the tube. And these are usually aluminum sheets that are placed into the path of the beam. And they're gonna work as a filter to attenuate the low energy photons. Um, Calculated together, inherent and added, for equipment working over 70 kbp, according to the NCRP 102, we should have a minimum of 2.5 millimeters of aluminum equivalent allowed. If it's below that, there are settings um, for below 70 and below 50. Um, below 50, we're, we'll see in mammography, right? We won't see that mainly in diagnostic, but there are specific requirements. To calculate total filtration, you simply add the two together, inherent plus added. There are some compensating filters that I really have never used as a technologist, but uh, apparently they exist in the world, okay? Compensating filters, filters uh, the point of them is in the name. They're gonna compensate for different thicknesses or densities of the body. And so some common names are a wedge filter, a boomerang, a trough. Um, this example was showing you how a wedge filter would help you with a more uniform appearance on say a thoracic spine. So you know your AP thoracic, um, the density here at the upper portion versus the lower portion is significantly you know, different in densities. So allowing a wedge filter to be placed in um, the thinner portion, making it a more uniform exposure and filtering out the low energy and just allowing the you know, rest of the beam to come through would give you a more uniform um, rate. 